Good, so... One day... We don't know when that day will come. <clears throat> One day we must accept and live in the truth of the real self. Whether we accept it today or in many births, that is the idea thrown by our masters. We cannot run away from the truth. I like you, I dislike you, I hate you, I love you. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any sense. Do you see that? Uh, we all are seekers, so it does not make any sense whether we like someone, we dislike someone. The basic thing is that we cannot run away from the truth. And that is the goal set by our masters that we have to release mind from ignorance and limitations. But why? To be in peace, to be in happiness, to be in love, to be in wisdom. What we have done in our life, <coughs> we have habituated our discomfort. We have habituated our likes and dislikes. Do you see? And that is what is ignorance. We are going deeper. That is what is our ignorance. Is. Take a simple example. You have a knee pain and it is continuous. So our steps, the way we walk changes. We have habituated. We have habituated. Now we say we are out of the pain. No, you are not out of the pain. See that? There comes the answer that why we have to apply the principles in our daily life. To change our behavior and attitude, to gain the skills of living within, to prevent stress, to prevent suffering, and ultimately we find the truth. We are talking of, we are trying to understand that we have to get rid of this ignorance, illusion. So the master asked the same question, are you a seeker? And I have been repeating it, that if we are a seeker, the first four, we have the four factors. The first is the discernment. <coughs> Sorry. Discernment simply means that I separate real from the unreal in my daily life. I separate likes, from the likes and dislikes from what is the truth. So once I separate, for example, likes and dislikes from the truth, anxiety is gone. So that discernment is the first step. This passion uh, is the second step. And then we have the six treasures. Six treasures means that mind by default given to us at the time of the earth, time of the birth is full of peace and happiness. And then we have an intense desire for the freedom from the limitations, freedom from the ignorance, freedom from freedom from the suffering. Pay attention. One day we have to. Today, it may happen today. It may happen tomorrow. It may happen weeks after, months after, years after, or in many lives. You know, that is the metaphor used by our great masters that we have to accept the truth of the real self. We are the real self and the real self is of the nature of peace, happiness, love and wisdom.
You accept it today, start working on it, become the highest level of a seeker, then it takes few weeks or few months. Or we continue with it. Because this mind has trillions of impressions. Trillions. Trillions of impressions of illusion, of ignorance. So the many people ask me the question when we, we fail even after understanding how to succeed. We fail. But why we fail? Because we have understood that is the first level, but the dispassion is not applied. So the likes and dislikes continues in our journey. Pain and the pleasure continues in our journey. We, we have an intellect. Intellect is definitely, we are intelligent to understand these principles. We are doing the practice. We experience the change after the practice, but we lack that dispassion. Dispassion means, you know, I have nothing to do with the likes and dislikes. Because the more likes and dislikes are there, pain and the pleasure is there, we continue to gather impressions. And that is why we are understanding what is not self, what is not real self, what is false self. And that is where, again, in a symbolic way, we say that we are this body, mind, intellect, ego is made up of 24 elements. 24 elements. Five elements, physical, five energy, functioning, five sense organ, five motor organ, mind and memory, intellect and ego. So they all together known as delusion, maya or prakriti. I told you, remember again, you accept the truth today and your mind is has an intensive and burning desire to get out of that untruth and the false or the delusion or <coughs> Continue the journey in that suffering. People like, you know, this, this guy, couple guy, coach. Even after so many sessions, they kept strong likes and dislikes against each other. And in every session, they told me that they have understood. And in the next session, they start blaming and complaining. <clears throat> so you continue with the likes and dislikes. It is not going to help you. So what is the conclusion? Pay attention that you are delusion. I want to be happy by being unhappy. See, that is the teaching of the, our master. I want to be unhappy by being unhappy, by being strong likes and dislikes. I want to be happy keeping the pain with myself. And that pain declares in my mind that I am worthy of suffering. So once we have understood this, now go on the lighter note again. I am using the same metaphor. How is the blueness created on the sky? How the water is seen in the mirrors. Water is not there. Blueness is not there. But still it is created. Same way the likes and dislikes are created. Our pain and the pleasures are created on the real self. Real self is here and I create, I superimpose. Water is superimposed in a mirrors. The blueness is superimposed on the sky. It is not there. The waves are superimposed on the water. It is not there. 
why you say that you know I see the waves I see the blueness I see the water how can you say it is not there so those people who have who live on the surface they do not contemplate and reflect they blame like this but all waves is water So what happens when I, you know, still after knowing that the sky is not blue, we understand. I see that there is a blueness in the sky, but I have a knowledge that the sky is not blue. I see the water in the mirage, but I have a knowledge that it's only uh, a delusion. Same way I understand. This body, mind, intellect, ego are superimposed on the real self. But you live with the body, mind, intellect, and ego. Who says don't live? So it doesn't create any delusion. And you find the real self. See that. Understanding in Eastern wisdom means that dispassion is there, mind is calm, all past impressions of passion and reaction, dualities, hesitation have gone. Not you have managed it, but because they belong to delusion. Did you get it? It's a different from modern psychology. It's an Eastern psychology. I don't accept its authority. I don't accept the authority of a pain in the delusion. The way we don't accept the authority of water in the mirrors, the blueness of the sky. When you don't accept, the mind triggers you from the past impressions and the past impression claims that you are worthy of suffering and then you continue to suffer. Are you responsible for your life? Say yes. So J. Krishnamurti, one of the great masters, he used to come to the United States for many, many years in the 80s and 90s. He said responsibility means to respond with affection, with a kindness and compassion, fun and play. To what? To the delusion we already have. Now, another part that I have covered last time, remember this is very important. Otherwise, our mind will fall back into delusion again. Where there is delusion, where there is illusion, there is a real self behind it. The delusion cannot exist without the real self. It is veiled. It is covered and through the knowledge I remove the delusion and when I you remove the delusion by knowledge how can you remove the water in the mirage by knowledge see so now answer another question what causes superimposition what causes superimposition means what causes the water in the mirrors. We are not going into the scientific process. We are going into what is happening to the mind. Why the mind starts liking something at one time. It dislikes at another time. And then it suffers. Then it creates a sense that we are worthy of suffering in our life. That is the answer we have to give. And I have given one answer before that. 
I miss the reality. I miss the real self. As long as I miss the real self, I will continue to suffer. I will feel limitedness. <coughs> I will feel deluded. The master gives many metaphors with a simple example. Gold ring. Now here in US we we like platinum. So platinum ring, platinum neck, necklace. So platinum ring and the necklace are superimposed on the platinum. Wave is superimposed on the water. So why we studied the five sheath and the three bodies, they all are superimposed on the real self. Going deeper. Are you paying attention? Yes, yes, continue. I will forget after the session. No worries, you remember me. So now you say that two, two problem comes because of superimposition. Sam, are you attentive? Yes. Say yes. So first is the wailing power. And second is the projecting power. Let me explain you first by an example and then we will go. I see Terry. I don't see the real self. That is wailing power. Clear? I don't see the real self. I see Terry, I see Weber, I see MSTC, I see David, I see Jerry. Clear? That is willing power. So once we have the willing power, the mind says, Terry is the truth, David is the truth, Jerry is the truth. Two powers of delusion. Not very difficult. I gave two examples. Two powers of the delusion, two powers of the maya, two powers of ignorance. Even the ignorance has power of unconsciousness. First, I see what I see, that you are Sam, you are not the real self. And then I claim Sam is the truth. Now the Sam doesn't like me. So I have likes and dislikes. See that? So with the likes and dislikes, I have pain and pleasure. And the mind has started the circle, cycle of Maya and the delusion. See, do you see that? Do you see it clearly? How beautiful the way the masters explain. First, the wailing power hides the truth. We do not capture the real self. And then the projection. What is the projection? That there is no real self. Only there is a superimposition. The water is truth. The blueness of the sky is the truth. Well, follow. Step by step, just see that too. Remember, understand that inside your mind. The moment I see anything, the wall, clock, monitor, it's a willing power. I don't see the real self. And then I see the monitor is the truth. Monitor is the truth is a projection. And it both works in the mind and the mind lives in delusion. That is why the entire, every master clearly says that mind is the cause of the suffering and the mind is the cause of permanent peace and happiness. You remove the illusion from the mind, the mind will reflect the real self. You don't remove it. As long as you do not remove it, this suffering is not going to go.
Now apply this closer. I have a pain in the body. But the real self is free, always free from the pain. So wailing power and projecting. That projecting power of the ignorance, of unconsciousness. Ignorance also has a greater power. that ignorance, second power, the projecting power, the mind haunts you that no, you are the body, that's why you feel the pain. Now the simple answer comes, again you see how there's two powers, have you understood, the wailing power, projection power. Now question comes from where the wailing power comes, from where the projection power comes. We have to find the answer. It should be very clear. And it comes from the three gunas. That is the rule of the three guna. The first guna, we say sattva guna. It gives us a knowledge. Second guna, rajo guna. It gives us an activity. And third guna, Inertia Tamoguna. We all are seekers. We are going deeper. Now, knowledge, activity, and inertia. Knowledge and understanding. So, what is the knowledge in ignorance? That I have a pain. No, I don't have a pain. My body has a pain. I'm not a husband, it's a label. It's very clear knowledge. No, no, but outside you should say that I'm husband and I'm wife, otherwise problem will be there. You, you see, that is how the ignorance covers us by the three gunas. And these gunas, satoguna, rajoguna, tamoguna, constantly works in the mind and it causes us ignorance and we continue to suffer. You know, they, they, these three gunas creates a building block. You have one building block, that's why you claim that you are Sam, you have so many problems. Another building block is Terry, third building block is Weber, fourth building block is Girish, fifth building block is David. And so we, we hide that real self because of ignorance. Willing power, projection power. And that is why we see there are infinite creations due to the three gunas. That is why my mind in ignorance sees anesthesia is different from Terry. Terry is different from David. David is different from Sami, different from Sam. It is happening in delusion. It is happening in ignorance. Another way to understand it, <coughs> we are going deeper. So because of these three gunas, because of these three gunas, we have five elements. So the science works beautifully from the material world, it picks up the matter 
which is totally the last run in the material physical evolution. We pick up, we start the journey from the space. We have five elements or you can say these five elements are solid, liquid and gas. Another, uh, another classification from the science. So from the three gunas comes the first thing, the space comes. From the space comes the air, fire, water, and ultimately the earth. Don't take it literally. The earth element means what is solid, what is visible as a name in the form. The bones in the physical body is the earth element. Whatever is appears very solid. Whatever appears liquid is water element. I don't remember the name of that scientist, you know, who calculated the amount of space and the air that is present in the human body which is six feet of size or 120 pounds he said that if you remove the air in the space from the six feet body uh, your body will be reduced to a small match box he proved that We are not more than that. Let us pick up one more understanding. So our master says, from the space, the quality of the sound came. Now from the space created, space plus prana, space plus energy, what is the second element? Air. The, in the air you have a quality of touch plus the quality of sound. Just for the sake of your contemplation and reflection, the third element from the top is the fire, the heat. Heat or the energy, enzymes, hormones that represents, we will talk later, for fire you have the quality of the form is added. Fire is present in my eyes that is able to see the name in the form. So you see in the space you have only one quality that is sound. In the air you have a quality of touch and the sound. In the air you have a quality of form plus sound and touch. Quality of water. You have a quality of taste is added. For the earth you have a quality of smell is added and ultimately the earth element, we see the material world. This is how we understand the entire material world. They came from the Satoguna, Rajoguna and Tamoguna, means three gunas. These three gunas creates the Maya, the delusion. We live in the delusion. That is why I see you are different from me. I am different from you. You understood good? Say yes that you have understood. Even if you do not understand, just contemplate and reflect on it. Space, sound, air, sound and touch. Fire, sound, touch in the form. Water, sound, touch, form and the taste. And the earth, all the five sensory experiences are present and from the sattva from the knowledge element five sense organs mind intellect ego are created we will understand it clearly so don't be uh, don't reject anything <coughs> We have all the energy, the prana is created from the tamoguna, 
the body, physical body is created. But they all are created. It has two purposes, the wailing power and it has another purpose of projecting power. The wailing power and the projecting power caused by the delusion. That is why I feel I am limited to this body. I am limited to this name. I am limited to this form. I have strong likes and dislikes and we continue to live in the entire process of delusion. One day we have to accept the truth. I started today's talk from there. We One day we have to accept that we are the real self. Either you accept today, after a week, after a month, after years, or after many lives. So after many lives, it means from one birth to the another birth, you are constantly suffering. Today you are suffering. And I remember one of the greatest Master Swami Vivekananda who visited our U.S. long back in 1893 or 7. Now pay attention. Yoga is a process of evolving in few years or you start with yoga is a process of compressing your evolution conscious evolution so if we start evolving consciously by these principles and the practice we can compress our evolution and discover the real self either in many lives or in this very life or in few years or in few weeks or in few hours of earthly existence. Why few hours? Those four qualities to become a seeker is at the level of peak. You are born, you are gifted with those qualities or few hours or few weeks or few months or few years, you are constantly working on the process of your evolution. No God, no cult, no dogma, no belief, no religion. Did you get it, Sam? If Sam gets it, then everyone will get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's another way to... No, no, I'm just joking. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Now see that. Let us translate those principles into, into our realization. Eyes are closed. The mind is facing within. And the body is steady. You are removing the layers of the delusion, my friends. Normally, people feel, people pay a lot of attention on the deluded layers. They say, no, I have to practice asanas for 10 years before I go into meditation. I told you the story. This beautiful girl had three surgeries of the spine because of practicing physical yoga for 10 years. Everything is right, but just we are understanding. <clears throat> the body is steady. Why we want the steadiness of the body? In the beginning, when we are treating the path. Because that real self is always steady, still. It is only a presence, it is a pure consciousness, pure consciousness never changes. From that we have taken a reference. But if the body continues to visit, it's okay. 
it may be because of some problem, then it is okay. If it is not because of the problem, we have to become aware. Body, why you are moving? Are you alive? No, I'm not alive. The body is a matter. So it comes from the energy. Because without the force and the power, it cannot move. Oh, it comes from the projecting power. And from where it comes, it comes from the mind. Why it comes from the mind? Because the mind lives in delusion. Do you see? With the same step, we have changed the practice of meditation. With that clarity, with that understanding. Why that understanding? You just give us meditation, you know. We are habituated with our eyes closed and then uh, looking into the beautiful space in the garden. No, that will fall back into delusion. Now see, being comfortable. Last time I, we went a little deeper, so every time you use the phrase being comfortable, you look inside. You need to drop the delusion from the mind. Why the steadiness is always there, it comes from the real self. And unsteadiness, instability comes from the ignorance. I have already explained it. Move the mind on the entire body. So moving the mind means you are aware, you are conscious, you are paying attention on the entire body to move into an experience of sensation pertaining to the physical, comfortable mind, steadiness pertaining to the real self. One day what I will do, I will just give you the practice with being comfortable and being carefree and being casual. Only the first three steps, which our mind knows now as the preparatory step, but they are the highest step. Depending on the temperament and the level of the seeking, I express differently. <coughs> Oh, is that so? Yes. And being carefree, free from all the cares of the mind. Cares, how the mind cares by the thoughts and feeling and the memory and the past impressions. So it is constantly jumping. That jumping is the Rajoguna, the second quality. And so I should know that the mind is jumping from one thought to the other. I should know that knowing is a witness. Witness means I'm, I'm just standing across the road watching the traffic of the thoughts and the feeling. It comes instantly. The way after knowing that there is no water in the mirrors, we are carefree. We know the blueness in the sky, carefree. We know all our platinum, whether it's a ring, whether it is a necklace, whether it is any other name and the label. You see, you can apply the same example metaphor, whether it is Vaibhav, Anesthesia, David, Jerry, me or you, we all are made of But you see that the mind, I'm holding back one thing, I will reveal it later. Uh, the mind continues to perceive the duality, 
Now it's a very finer impurity. <coughs> our likes and dislikes have gone, our anxiety has gone perhaps. So that is why we continue with the active step of mantra. You are in the state of steadiness looking inside the heart in the cave of the, your heart continue to say om shanti and start breathing quick short and gentle breathing into your rib case and see that it helps you to become refresh yourself calmer and calmer and the mind is not causing any disliking for the practice. Why? You can do the practice even for 20 minutes, half an hour. But we'll do it for five or six minutes, continue. Om Shanti continues in the cave of your heart with a gentle and softer chanting mentally. The quick and short breath continues. The body remains in the state of steadiness. And just stop it. Now pay attention that this is done to refresh the mind, calm down the mind, to move the mind within. For, for what? To find the common point. Where is the common point? I covered that in the practice. What is that? Sarvesham swastir bhavatu. We're asking the mind, why don't you see the common point? Let there be a speciousness for all. Sarvesham swastir bhavatu 
Sarvesham Swastar Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu May there be peace for all. So in order to see the peace, we go deep inside the cave of your heart and we find the common space, the infinite space. Sarvesham Shantar Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Let there be completeness, the wholeness in all. Completeness in all you discover you are already there. You have found the real self. Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu Sarvesham Puranam Bhavatu We have already understood the recitation and the meaning, then the meaning and then the knowledge. So why we ask the mind to go to the knowledge and again and again, Satogana, out of the three gunas, from the Satoguna we can take a jump, a leap. Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu You don't see the auspiciousness but you know. How do you know? That we are experiencing perfect calm in the poise, awareness and attention. The mind is living within. We will again go for one simple active step, but this time we will throw a challenge to the mind. Look inside the forehead in the space and start hammering Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti. As if every, every hammering takes your mind deeper and deeper and deeper. Symbolically, again, it's a metaphor. Because you all are seekers, so I'm uh, straightforward. So when we say you are looking inside the forehead, which is the center of knowledge and the wisdom, it is a metaphor to make us understand. Continue, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti. It is, you are doing it mentally, quick, fast and loud, so that, so much so, you don't have a single thought between Om Shanti. And if that is so, you will experience all pervading one consciousness.
Now inside the heart, simply you change the location. You keep looking inside the cave of your heart and continue hammering Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, and check. No other thought disrupts. Quick, fast, loud chanting in your mind of the Om Shanti. So you are able to separate the mind from the higher consciousness. Om Shanti 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 Quick, fast and loud. In your mind, location, you already know it. And that will keep you away from, especially the first physical body, and also the second mental, subtle body, and also the causal body. So symbolically, this is known as the center of emotion and desire. (coughs) And now inside the belly button, continue with Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, quick, fast and loud in your mind. And for one-pointedness inside the belly button in the space, And you will discover that as if you are transcending the body, as if the body has nothing to do with you, physical one. And sometimes the mind in ignorance attached to the physical body and it moves the physical body while doing the Om Shanti. It moves the lips. You are doing it mentally. See that? So you will discover how much we are attached. Identify. Now leave this, gently move the mind inside the cave of your heart, singing mentally. In search of the mind seemingly stops, drop Shanti, stay there in that state of mindfulness or emptiness. So when we say the cave of your heart, these caves are the five sheets. I believe you remember. Five caves. A moment, any thought, any feeling, any impression, 
Rise in the mind, do it again. Om Shanti. You can find out. <coughs> can you extend the period of staying in that state outside with reference to the time and inside it becomes the timelessness. Do you see everything is so clear? In a way, you are doing nothing. It's a very casual but approach with awareness. Shanti, you are already there. You need not to do it. One of the Tari can maintain that steadiness and stillness. We can, we all can. I will chant Om Shanti to deepen the practice. You do nothing. And after that, we'll return and share our experiences. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Beautiful. Let me do it one more. Oh. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Bring your awareness on the right hand, your awareness on the left hand. 
Lift your both your palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside, know your experiences. Now we'll share your experiences. Now it's your turn to speak. How are you, Vebhav? <coughs> Uh, sir, it's like that mind can totally quiet, totally disposed, and then this like when it is totally empty, then it's like a happiness started inside automatically. Uh, I just, like it, it's not like that. I'm looking for it; it comes automatically. Yes, it's a beautiful uh, sharing. You see that the mind can never become empty, but the deepest layer of the mind is always empty. So it means we are settled here. My friend Terry, you can bring the hands down. She is enjoying. How are you? Yeah, I didn't want to come out of it. Yeah, I today it was very easy. I did the the beginning part, which is usually very hard for me, very easily. So that was very good. And um, I had awareness of, a, you know, all the different, I, I went very um, deep. Uh, yeah, a good <coughs> way, but I can, I could still feel the body sort of pulling at me, nagging at me, going, hey, 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 yeah. hey, me, me. But um, I had awareness of the, uh, the place of the heart. Yeah. Uh, I was able to think of it as where the place where the watcher sits. Okay. And there's there's nothing going on there. It's no wind, no air, no, no space, no lights, no colors, no flashing. Beautiful. It's like a little cave Beautiful. in my imagination. So your contemplation and reflection based on the knowledge went very well, but at the same time, the body was nagging. So a part of the delusion but, existed. Do you see that? But if you can continue in this state all the time, every time you meditate, then we can challenge your problem. How are you, David and Jerry? <coughs> um, sir, thank you. Um, another great meditation. It was um, this time it was uh, the fast breathing. After the fast breathing, there was this drop into space and then after the chanting another drop and then by the time we started doing the hammering it was just like nothing nothing peaceful nothing beautiful. The rest of it. so that is beautiful you know hammering i use the term so that once your mind is fully realizing you hammer the nail so every time the nail goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and now you need not to hammer, and you are there. Just an expression. Beautiful. How are you, Jerry? Sir, I'm good. Thank you. Um, there's no duality. There's um, this the the knowledge of the pure consciousness and the knowledge that when we're in life, we have to live in this transactional world. That's everything's changing, but the knowledge that the pure consciousness is never changing. So it's just, that's where we live from. Beautiful. Beautiful. I will repeat it again, but I remember what you share. In the transactional world, it is constantly changing. We have not created this world of change. So we accept it. And we accept the truth of the real self. Now see, I am talking. So there are two I am. Can you find out the two I am? One is simply I am, period. And second is I am talking. That is the change. 
I will keep it there. We'll pick up uh, in the following sessions. That is what, you know, transactional world is in, in the midst of constant change. But there is a constant awareness of the unchanging identity. It is constant. Yeah, there. How are you, Sam? The practice today was uh, very light and, and peaceful. Peaceful. Beautiful. That says that you had a deeper practice. So, how are you, Anesthesia? Yeah, sorry. Thank you very much. It was uh, very peaceful. I had a feeling of timeless and body less. And I have a question if I uh, yeah, yeah, remember go ahead. and understood. Yeah. Uh, I just want to check it uh, if I understood properly that space is property of mind. Yes. Can I use this quote to for con contemplation? Yes. Definitely. Definitely. Because we have, ex we have, uh, I think we have covered that in a deeper, in previous couple of sessions. Matter, earth, from the earth to water, to fire, to air, to space. And who looks at the space? Very subtle, pure ego. So yes, it is the mind. How are you, Ashok? Namaste, sir. Namaste, sir. Uh, I am good. Peace and cool. Peace and Progress. cool. Progressive. Awareness is more. Yes, yes. You are already cool. We know that. We all know that. <laughs> How are you, Samir? <laughs> sir, uh, total awareness was flowing inside me. Okay. Good. And all all thoughts were disappearing. Very good. And after two three minutes, when you started, everything disappeared, uh, and there was a clean sheet inside of darkness of awareness. That's all it. And I was sitting without anything, means no body, nothing, and beautiful. listening to you. <laughs> yeah, it's a deeper. Yeah, it's a deeper state. So that deeper state lives in us inside and outside we are doing all of our activities. Sam? Yes, how are you Rakesh? <laughs> Thank you sir. Uh, sir, I was watching the breathing and, uh, and the mantra chanting uh, and all the activities uh, and it was the feeling was of a very deep, uh, being in the very depth. Uh, during the mantra chanting, uh, Om Shanti, uh, I realized that the, between the two, two mantras, uh, there was a gap and in that gap, the mind was repeating that mantra. Hmm. So the mantra was coming inside my mind, in my ears, uh, from the, from the mind. So Beautiful. that is how I was today. Yeah, we have a witness consciousness that comes up. We are going to take up that part in the following sessions. But don't forget, we have to accept the real self one day. It is today or after a week, if you are the highest level of a seeker, or in few weeks and months, or in few years, or in many births. Choices, yours. That is all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Namaste everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Namaste.